Earth is full of a splendid array of plants, animals, and other organisms astonishingly different, but sharing common traits. Evolution explains the diversity, complexity, and ultimately the unity of life. A Streptococcus bacterium, a monkey, and this sidewinder could hardly be more distinct, but all are made of cells and share the same machinery for growth and development. What makes them so alike? In 1859, in his book, On the Origin of Species, Charles Darwin astonished the world with an answer. Darwin presented the theory of evolution. He described it as the process by which every organism descends from ancestors similar, but not identical, to it. All living things, he reasoned, have the ability to reproduce. But resources to support a given population are limited. There is inevitably competition to mate, to find food and water, to survive. Since no two organisms are exactly alike, there is variety in the structure and behavior of each individual. Evolution favors the individuals most attractive to the opposite sex, best able to survive predators and to find prey. Darwin called this natural selection. Over many generations, natural selection favors genetic traits best suited for survival in a specific environment species change. Some theologians argued against Darwin's theory. They held on to the idea that all life was created simultaneously by God and that each distinct life form remained unchanged. The debate raged on nearly half a century after Darwin's death. Dateline, Dayton, Tennessee, July 11th, 1925. In a moment, the story. A young school teacher, John Scopes, was charged with teaching evolution in his classroom. On the day of the trial, a full house of avid spectators from all over the nation filed in to hear the debate. The issue was no longer the innocence or guilt of Scopes, but rather the final death struggle between two basic human philosophies, fundamentalism versus modernism. Scopes was found guilty and fined a hundred dollars. And though the verdict was overturned on a technical point, the law against teaching evolution remained on the books in Tennessee until 1967. The conflict between scientific and religious explanations of life continues today. Just ask Baptist minister Jerry Falwell. There's not a shred of evidence that will stand the test of time that denies the biblical account of creation. That when God created Adam and then took Eve out of the side of Adam, they were as complete as we are now. That there was no evolution, no change. Scientists like Dr. John McCosker have a different perspective. You know, the irony of all of this is that here we are, we've had email, and one of the first emails we got was someone asking the question, does your experience in Galapagos change your view about that controversial theory of natural selection? My response was, Madam, it is not controversial, and it's not a theory, it's a fact. I only wish that we could take everybody on this planet and send them to the Galapagos to see natural selection in action. It's so obvious here. The evidence supporting the scientist's point of view is overwhelming. Biological adaptation is a part of everyday life. New flu viruses evolved surviving last year's vaccine. Insects evolved to survive our pesticides and diseases like cholera and tuberculosis have outcompeted some of our antibiotics. Small, rapidly producing animals change far more quickly than more complex organisms like mammals. 
But over time, evolution occurs in all species on Earth. 